tired of paying gasoline bills? Are you really fed up with seeing the captain go down to the gas station there all the time to fuel up? Well, with this here pup, you don't need to stop at the gas station. You might have stopped alongside the road, but this actually runs on pine cone sticks, blocks of firewood. And it's a wood gasifier. No, it's not a still. This is technically a refinery. And this is not just some harebrained scheme that has been put together by my father, a mechanical engineer, and my brother-in-law, an expert welder and research man. Uh, during World War II, a great many automobiles ran on wood gas. Uh, the entire supply chain for the Soviet armies were running Model A Ford trucks that had been fitted out with wood gasifiers. Uh, domestically, many of our tractors and trucks were. All of the occupied countries of Europe had taxi cabs. Uh, buses were all running wood gasifiers. However, it takes my father to take the cyclonic theory and put it to use. Now, for the technical aspects of this wonder, I'm going to turn this over to my dad and my brother-in-law. Dad? Well, I, I suppose, um, I know that I was about 10 years old, the vets were coming back from World War II, and my ears would perk up, and I would kind of try and ask them. Um, they rode in taxi cabs that were powered by wood, but nobody has ever been able to tell me how it worked, but that was enough. So it's been a long time about 70 plus years before I get around to actually having one of these things that works, thanks to my son and son-in-law. The car itself, would briefly mention that, it is a 1913 Ford. Um, take a quick shot here of, of all, fo power mill. all Ford engines, all Model T's are identical. Very, very brutally simple. They're an excellent test engine. And besides that, we had built this Ford up to make a depot hack out of it. We created it to do that. And then this idea came along and it was a perfect uh, test bed to uh, put this on it. On top of that, I have a few, five other Model T's that run. So we have lots of parts and experience with them. They're easy to work on. The key to driving this thing is we have the wood gas vapor going back through this pipe this way. This modulates outside air into that, controlled by what used to be the spark control. You could probably produce it from materials you just find in scrap yards. For instance, this is just an inverter fire extinguisher. This is an old propane tank. Uh, inside is an old CO2 cylinder that we lopped off and changed around to make it. Uh, the old ammo boxes. Actually, this was part of a post out of a bed head frame, I think. Uh, you can use any VW blower out of the heating system if you want. Uh, basically, these are components you can readily find anywhere. Down here is our ash cleanout, and there's a grate inside the bottom of this that the blocks of wood eventually go down into, turn to ash. The ash ends up at the bottom of this. And to fill it, we fill up the interior of the hearth with wood. And it generally will run probably about 45 minutes uh, in idle, maybe half an hour if you're actually running around under load. But it takes one of these buckets of wood right here. It's 10 pounds, Mike, I just weighed it. Yeah, see, 10 pounds of wood. that's 10 pounds of wood, one five gallon bucket. And that's about uh, half an hour if you're running around. Now we cut the block to a specific size, or at least a general size, about like that, uh, because there is a constriction ring inside. And as it burns up, you want to make sure it goes through the constriction ring and ends up down on the grate eventually after it's gone through the reduction process. Basically what you have is the top portion of this is a drying zone. And as you come down further, below that is our pyrolysis zone. I think that's pronounced correctly. And then down below that is the combustion zone. And then down at the very bottom below the constriction ring, actually from the constriction ring down, is the reduction zone. And in the process of doing it, it dries out the wood at the top. It goes through a thermochemical reaction of uh, decomposition of organic matter when it hits the pyrolysis zone. And then it goes down into a combustion zone where everything really, almost as if you were uh, looking inside your fireplace or your 
uh, well, wood burning stove would be a good example. It's choke combustion, so all you're really getting is the vapor off of it, but it never really bursts into flames. And then the reduction zone seems to be the final chemical reaction where you kind of split the tars and the moisture uh, into hydrogen, carbon monoxide, about 20% of each of those, uh, roughly 2 to 4% methane. The rest is basically nitrogen. And it just ends up as water vapor after it's been combusted. Over here, we have our little pilot light. And we just put a little torch in here. And it goes into the hearth and it starts the wood on fire. During the meantime, we have a blower. And when the blower is on, it sucks that producer gas out. And when we first start it up, we have a flue up on top. And if the gas is good, it'll uh, combust. Although we notice you can't really see the flame, but we know you can see the heat waves of the flame and you can light something with it. So now we know we have a combustible gas that's uh, sufficient for use in the engine. Down below this blower are two R19 fiberglass filters. And they are actually in what they use for bees, honeycomb trays. And that sits in there. And then up here, right here, between the blower and this, it's just a regular HVAC filter. And that seems to pick up most of the stuff as it comes out. Any condensation ends up in these little glass jars. Excess condensation, I should say. We have the guys at the smog shop ready to look in the thing, but there's, yeah, there's nothing yeah. coming out. It's just water. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're, that's what you're doing. So uh, today, Volvo makes one that actually is a wood gas fire on a little trailer. It yeah. hooks to the back of their cars, and there are several other manufacturers that make these. We don't see them here in, in the United States, especially here in California, but they are worldwide. Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Canada, Alaska, South America, they have wood gas fires. Uh, if you're not going to get a reliable source of petroleum, you know, here's an alternative. And if the price of fuel goes through the roof... Well, I think we should put wood in it and start it up for the folks. and. Uh... Uh, I, now, now, what's going to happen? I'm going to start the Ford engine because it needs to be hot, we think. We haven't tried to start it cold. And also, the Ford generator will uh, provide power for the uh, vacuum pump to operate here, the floor. Now, now this is running on gasoline now, not, not wood. Uh, we're just warming up the engine right now. And now when we start to light that, we'll turn on that blower, and I want to keep, the engine generator will keep up with the blower. When we get to the point of switching over to the uh, gas, I'll turn this off. This valve shuts off all the gasoline into the engine. We are going to light the interior, and all we do is stick this in here, like so. It usually goes pretty quick. It's already lit. Yep. Now, as you can see, the smoke is already starting to come out the top since the wood is ignited. You can see where it's pulling through the cyclone. The purpose of the cyclone is actually to catch some of the ash and the condensation coming through. But we found that using a thin wall stainless steel actually cools the gas as well. You can see down here at the bottom, the gas is coming through here. And then it comes back out here, goes through the cooling and it ends up cooling a little more here, drops out a little more condensation here. Actually, these will actually fill up with about a pint of water. Well, let's find out if we got a combustible mixture yet. Oh, there it goes. That's it. Now it's staying lit. You can see the heat waves emanating from the top, but the gas isn't quite bright yet. It's almost there, though. There we go, now it's starting to stay. It's combusting and uh, reducing. Yeah, it's, it's good to go now. Well, Bill, you wanna okay. wean it off the gas now? running on vapor from the wood.
once the thing is running and we've got up the temperatures, you don't have to go through this whole process to fire the thing up. It's already fired up. You keep running it. In many ways, when you hear about a refinery going down and the price of gas goes up because they have to retool, reformulate for the spring winter blend versus the summer blend, well, once you've got this going, then you just keep loading it and loading it and loading it and loading it and you keep running. But getting it going, it's going to take a little bit of time. Whether you're a gigantic refinery down there in the Bay Area or this little refinery you have on the back of your automobiles. So it's not, as my brother-in-law Mike points out, you're not just hopping in it, pressing the button and going. Once you've got it going, though, you don't need to stop at the gas station. Well, when you get your uh, extra ammo boxes and your outdated propane tanks and those CO2 cylinders, you just can't get certified. And you got a couple of extra headboards laying around from the old bed. You so just throw it all together. That's uh, great. Yeah, and, and you end up with a gasifier like this. We're going to head off to vacation now, so we're all going to pile in and head on out. And yes, it does accommodate three. Okay, we'll see you all next year. <laughs>